Whoa, and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people say amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. <laughs> if we play this again, would you like to hear? Uh, watch Nathan two step out. <laughs> hey, don't say it if you don't mean it. <laughs> now, can we get a Pastor Dan? <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, let us continually raise our eyes to the cross where lies our salvation. Help us to see in the cross the light that you have sent to guide us. Let us avoid darkness. Let us always look to the light that is our Savior, Jesus Christ. O oh God, so rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. going to hear the name of uh, Florence Stillwell. That's Larry Stillwell's mother who had a stroke. And Rosemary Decker. Rosemary moved from Springfield a oh, year, year and a half ago. Um, she's now in uh, ther therapy. She's going to turn 90 on the 21st, which I think is next Saturday. If you'd like to drop her a note, there are uh, cards with her address on the welcome table. There's also some on the bulletin board right across the hall through these doors. See what? I, oh, by the way, it's been a very busy week. Well, we'll talk about that later. 
Our gospel text, as John said in his prayer, is, contains John 3.16 in it. If we were going to have the second lesson, it would be Ephesians 2. It would contain Ephesians 2, verses 8, 9, and 10. So we're going to look at both John, uh, the words of uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, as well as Ephesians, chapter 2. And we'll see what that means for our lives.
Father, you watch with dismay as we continually miss the mark, leaving us in a desolate place. Be with us today and always. Lead us out of the desert of trials and arid temptations. Walk with us to the oasis where the waters of forgiveness refresh. Let us see the beauty of your kingdom and dismiss the mirages of this world. These things we ask in the name of your Son. Jesus. Amen. Here is the good news in our gospel text today. Believe it or not, the gospel writer that wrote the gospel of John believes that the cross is a good thing. And he says, if Jesus be lifted up, it's a good thing. Because he will draw all people himself. And what draws people to Jesus is the fact that in him, because of his death on that cross, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So it's my pleasure to announce to you that Almighty God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, forgives you, forgives us all our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is 
is a cry of my heart to be close to you. It is a cry of my heart to gospel lesson today comes from the gospel of St. John, the third chapter. Jesus said, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, And do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be (coughs) clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. All right, I'm going to invite the young people to come and sit down right here. How many of you like snakes? No. <laughs> Bren said no. The rest of a couple of you said, well, maybe, huh? I don't. I don't. All right. I don't like snakes. <laughs> you know what? Most people don't like them, but if you guys like them, that's good. That's fine. Here's what was happening. Jesus said. Unless I be lifted up, like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness on a pole. Do you remember that story? In Numbers, God's people, the Hebrew people, were being bitten by snakes. They, yeah, and they were dying. And the cure was, God said, here's the cure. Put, make a serpent out of bronze. Put it on a pole and lift it up. And whoever li- looks upon it, believing in their heart that God uh, will save them, will be saved. So pe- he put it up on a pole and people did indeed uh, not die from, from snake bites. Got ahead of myself. In Thailand, don't Google snakes 
in Thailand because you'll come up with all kinds of uh, unusual and sometimes terrible things they're doing with snakes. But here's an example. Look at that big python, that big boa constrictor, and that young boy is laying on top of it. Can anybody see what's wrong with that picture? <laughs> you know, the nice thing about that snake is that snake is a friendly snake, at least to that boy. I think it's a bad snake. Well, the problem with snakes is that they, a big, especially a big snake like that, it could, my, my fear is it would eat that boy. <laughs> yeah. So generally, we don't like snakes. Here's number two. Moses was told, put a snake on a pole and lift it up. It's a golden one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's made out of bronze. Mm -hmm. And so it looks sort of pretty. And then Jesus said, excuse me, then Jesus said, if I be lifted up, just like that snake was, I'll draw all people to me because they'll believe in me. And because of his death on the cross, what happens to us? We're forgiven. We're made friends with God. Aren't you glad you're a friend of God's? Okay. Let us bow our heads and pray, okay? Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the cross. We thank you that we're your friends. Help us to believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. So I started to mention that this week has been an extremely busy week. We've had two funerals. And I just want to say thank you because you did a great job. Uh, both the funerals and the dinners afterwards. It was a, a big busy week. Uh, I told the staff who have been extremely busy because of the funerals and midweek Lenten worship. By the way, midweek Lenten worship continues this Sunday, noon and 7 p.m. And uh, on Saturday, or excuse me, on Friday afternoon when I left the office because I had to go to Kansas City for a synod council meeting, I told them they did an exceptional job at, during this busy week. And they agreed. <laughs> they did a great job. So thank you for... Um, uh, actually um, helping families understand the grace of God and the gospel and how it brings comfort to us uh, during these sad times. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I don't know if you ever read Pearls Before Swine. I don't read it enough because I didn't realize this guy was a goat. <laughs> I thought they were both pigs. <laughs> oh, the last night had to point that out to me. Oh, well. Here we are. I started dating this woman who's a medical doctor, but she told me she didn't like me and wanted to break up. So the goat says, what did you say? And I asked for a second opinion. 
And then at the next frame, doctors are easily offended. The reason I'm showing you that is that uh, Marcus Borg, in a book that I recommended to our uh, book club that they read, uh, Marcus Borg is a theologian. He actually grew up a, um, a Lutheran, an ELCA Lutheran up in South Dakota, went to a Lutheran seminary, graduated, went off to uh, the state of Washington and uh, taught theology at, I believe it was the University of Seattle, I could be wrong. And um, so he wrote a few books and has really become a, a popular theologian. He died recently, a couple months ago. But in his book, Reading the Bible for the First Time, he wrote something that I disagree with, and then the second part of it I agree with. The first part was that the way of Jesus is not a set of beliefs about Jesus. And, and he goes, that people ever thought it was is strange when we think about it. As if one entered new life by believing certain things to be true. Well, here's what, I, that, that part, I actually disagree with Marcus Borg. Because, and, and Marcus Borg, he, he's sort of known as a revisionist theologian. When he wrote that book, reading the Bible again for the first time, he threw away all of his presuppositions, everything he learned in Sunday school and, and uh, seminary, and suggests that maybe belief isn't important. Well, the Bible tells us that just is not so. In fact, if we look at, oh, and that's why I said, I want a second opinion. That's why the joke. If we go to our text today, we look in John chapter 3, and we read John 3.16 where Jesus says, the, the good news of John 3.16 is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. S there's something that happens to us when we believe. The Apostle Paul makes belief extremely important. He says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Something changes within us when we believe. Believing does give us new life. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. This is a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. You can't boast about it. We've been saved by faith. Faith does something to us. And uh, we, we could go on. Those are not the only places in Scripture where it talks about that. Romans chapter 3 uh, also talks about that. I won't uh, continue to, um, to tell you. And what happens to us? Something in us changes. And it changes our life. So now the second part of what Marcus Borg said, I agree with. The way of Jesus is the way of death and resurrection. The path of transition and transformation from an old way of being to a new way of being. I say that begins with faith. To use the language of the incarnation that is so central to John, Jesus incarnates the way. Incarnation means embodiment. Jesus is what the way embodied in a human life looks like. So we follow Jesus. It is the way.
Why? Because we believe something ha happens and changes us, transforms us. An example of this, and it's an example I've told you before, is the example of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. One of those times, I believe it was even the day before he gave the I Have a Dream speech. He received a phone call in the middle of the night, a terrible call, where, and he's received these phone calls in the past, but it was a call that said that he was going to be killed he and his entire family were going to be bombed. It was such a horrifying call that Dr. King was so upset he couldn't go back to bed. And he knew he couldn't wake his wife and tell her because she would be so upset. So he went to the kitchen, heated up some coffee, I cringed at that, stale coffee. <laughs> but I heated up some coffee and sat at the kitchen table and there held that warm cup and talked to God. I said, God, I cannot do this anymore. The cost is too great. I cannot. And he heard God say, but Martin, you must, you must, you must stand up for justice, for what is right. And I am with you, and I am with your family, and that is all you need to know. You know the rest of the story. Gave his speech, was killed. But he understood faith gave him the strength to call upon God and he stood for justice. How does that work? Let's see if God the Father shows love, mercy, kindness, life. Then, next slide, God the Son Faith, grace, life comes to me. You know why me is up there in the clouds? Because Ephesians chapter 2 says, in Christ we are lifted up and we're seated before God in the heavenly places. Martin Luther King Jr. may have looked like he was sitting at the kitchen table, but he was lifted up by God and he was seated in the heavenly places. We are in Christ, alive, saved, raised, seated, created as his workmanship. And you see all the arrows going down? We're the 10th verse of Ephesians 2. The 10th verse said, we are, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do the good works that he has put before us, that he has planned before us. So, I don't know what you're going to do tomorrow or even this afternoon. You come here to hear the good news, to be reminded you belong to God, to share faith with other people and to leave, leave here. And there's good works that God has put before you to do tomorrow, this afternoon, today, this week. They're good works and sometimes I'm afraid we step over them or sometimes we're just too afraid. Or sometimes we go on the other side of the street. And sometimes we actually do them. Martin Luther uh, told about um, Bernard of 
Clairvaux. He considered him one of the greatest, if not the greatest, saint, we could say, living Christian in, in the Middle Ages. Uh, Bernard, before his name was Bernard, he uh, lived in <coughs> part of France that was filled with poverty. Bernard and his family were uh, relatively well-to-do people. And uh, it was a part of France that not far from where he lived, it was called Wormwood, Wormwood Valley. Wormwood, uh, the name suggests that it was a, a place filled with ugliness and pain. People were hungry and poor. And what happened in this place, this place called Wormwood, is it wasn't safe. And Bernard was uh, captured, kidnapped, by some common cr criminals. Uh, and they did that often, as seems to happen more and more in our world, where they would ransom him back to his family. And, uh, of course, uh, more wealthy people uh, have some talent, so they wanted Bernard to um, entertain him. And rather than entertain him, he goes, I'll do you one better. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. He was a very devout Christian. And he told his captors about Jesus. And they were so moved that they let him go. As the years went by, he became a monk. And the uh, order of monks he would belong to, he asked if he could build hostels. So around his community in France, he built hostels. And one of the places in, in particular he wanted to build a hostel. A hostel was a place where poor people could go and uh, receive respite, relief, be fed. And ill people could come and be nursed back to life. Bernard, he now was Bernard, uh, went to the Valley of Wormwood and then started building this hostel. The very men who had kidnapped him years earlier came to him and said, we want to help you. So they helped Bernard build the hostel. And then they said, Bernard, we want to name the hostel. In fact, they renamed the entire valley. Went from Wormwood to Clairvaux, the Valley of Light. Bernard became Bernard of Clairvaux, Bernard of the Valley of Light. Bernard, touched by faith to shine God's light. What about us? Well, we come together not only to worship, but we do talk about doing uh, good things, shining God's light, doing whatever little good works we can. Sometimes that's a funeral. Sometimes that's uh, Ozark's food harvest. Sometimes that's cross lines. Sometimes it's that person you're going to meet today that needs a healing touch from you. Amen. we share our tithes and offerings.
Here I am, Lord, and I'm drowning in your sea of forgetfulness. Chains of yesterday surround me. I yearn for peace and rest. I don't want to end up where you found me. And it echoes in my mind, keeps me awake tonight. I know you cast my sin as far as the east is from the west. And I stand before you now as though I've never sinned. Today I feel like I'm just one mistake away from your leaving me this way. Jesus, can you show me just how far the east is from the west? Cause I can bear to see the man I've been. I'm rising up in me again in the arms of your mercy. Just how far the east is from the west From one scarred hand to the other How far the east is from the west Cause I can't bear to see the man I've been I'm rising up in me again In the arms of your mercy I found rest Cause you know just how far the east is from the west One scarred hand to the other God, we pray that you make your church, all of us, bold proclaimers of the gospel. We want those who do not know the depth of your love in Christ to hear and to believe. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that you encourage nations to work together for the sake of all people. We continue to remember Ferguson as problems persist with two police officers shot. Internationally, we ache with the news that two churches were bombed in Pakistan. And we ask that you would be with the survivors and relief workers in the aftermath of Cyclone Pam. Send your peace to all places in which the darkness has taken hold, places in which the light of truth and justice seems but a flickering candle. Lord, in your mercy, we are thankful that you do love the world. Provide respite and healing for all who suffer, especially Gary Coffey, Kelly Cowell, Mickey Fuller, the family of Kale Fuller, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Pat Morrison, Officer Pearson, Michelle Powell, Louise Snyder, Wayne Sproul, Bethany Tyndale, Janice Trotter, Florence Stillwell, and Rosemary Decker. Are there any others? pray for these as well as others that we name in silence. Resurrecting God, we remember those who now worship at your throne. We pray that you comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Jerry Brown, Dorothy Lokensgaard, and Mary Thomas. Lord, in your mercy, turn our hearts to praise as we are forgiven, healed, and freed from every evil that binds us. Shine your light upon us so that nothing about our life in you is hidden. Lord, in your mercy.
one scarred hand to the other. I know you washed me white, turned turn my, my darkness into light. I need your peace to get me through, to get me through this night. And live by what I feel, by the truth you were to me. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, our living water, our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
took some bread, the work of hands, and with the baking and the blessing, he gave a new command, do this in remembrance of me. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the gifts of his body and blood, 
Strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we, you have touched us with your grace through this heavenly meal. Empower us as we leave this place to live out the very good works that you will be placing before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.